What's up, it's you for today's video with a full analytic ability Pokemon team. Analytic is a really cool ability which boosts the power of attacking moves by 1.3 times when you go last. There's a couple of Pokemon families with this analytic ability, and I thought I'd put a cool team together with them all. If you do want to check me out on Twitch, people, this is where I do all my live streams for my theme teams, Pokemon Sweep, Shiny Hunts, or other forms of Salty Entertainment. Come and drop me a follow here. Today, I've got two battles with the analytic ability team, and I really hope you enjoy them. Now, on the Pokemon list, to get analytic as i said it's quite a few similar family trees but there are some pokemon that are pretty fast so i had to come up with strategies that made the pokemon kind of go last in their bracket right so we got a battle here this is against our coot to scoop and we've got a theme team as well if you're going to guess my opponent's theme team let me know in the comments so we've got this magnezone it's a physical set with analytic we've got gyra ball wild charge explosion and body press i don't know why i told you the ability because it's always in the title right so i've got the max health and max hack and i've got brave nature with zero iv so make sure that i go uh, last right so in comes the car call here i popped the gyra ball and it does pretty good damage to Carcoal, considering, right? Like, this is probably mostly definitely going to be a ever like bulky set. So, swapping out the uh, Magnezone, I don't want to get in by a fire type move and going into Starmie, right? Now, Carcoal is going to go for a Scorching Sands here on my Starmie, and unfortunately for me, it's going to burn it. I'm running a physical Starmie, so that's absolutely terrible, right? Let me go with what the Starmie set is anyway. It is uh, Max Health and also Max Stack Brave Nature, zero IVs. Now I've got Avalanche, Waterfall, and Psycho Cut. And what I'm going to be doing right is having Curse on this set too. So Curse will boost my defense and attack and drop my speed. So Starmie's a very, very fast Pokemon. So it was difficult to make this one work. So go for the Waterfall. The, uh, we got the Carcoal swapping out there and the Spiritune coming in here. I actually did pretty good damage there with the Analytic ability. Considering that I'm burn right, look at the amount of damage that it was doing then. So unfortunately, Spiritune, I actually get, uh, I still outspeed the Spiritune. is going to trick me an item right there. And I'm going to get given a Snowball, and it's going to get my Citrus Berry, which is very, very unfortunate. Citrus Berry was just there for in case I needed to set up a Curse Up, which was most times, and, uh, you know, get that uh, attack going. So here comes Poltergeist from the uh, Spirit Tomb, and that is going to take my Starmie out, unfortunately. Man, Starmie didn't stand much of a chance. It swapped into a Burn. I did get some impressive damage off against Spirit Tomb uh, with the Burn, though. Next Pokemon is Magneton here, which you've got another analytic Pokemon in this Evo line. I've got this set as a Zap Cannon Steel Beam Bolt Switch try attack set and i've also got our uh, choice specs on here as well max health and max special attack quiet nature zero ips so popping that steel beam there and spirit tomb is going to be going down pretty much on this entire team right all of my pokemon had zero ivs in speed or like hindering like abilities to drop speed next pokemon is chin Chow. you don't see this too often since i'm locked in the steel beam i've got to swap out and now i'm going to go into porygon 2 here of course, this has got analytic as well. Why do I keep saying that? Anyway, so Chi is going to go for a Whirlpool here. It seems to be a trapping set, probably a bulky trapping set. It possibly has Toxic. I'm not really sure at the moment, but that's what I'd be guessing, right? Or Scold, something like that. I've got a physical Porygon 2, Giga Impact, Last Resort, Iron Tail, and Thief. And I'm going to whack on a normal gem. Now, Chin is going to go for a Soak here, adding that water type to me. So now, if it uses any electric type moves, they will be super effective. So I need to watch out for that one right now. So go for that uh, Giga Impact here on the Chin hoping I can take it out. I've got the analytic boost, but man, this thing is super, super thick. This is very, very similar to the Starmie build. It is max health and max stack brave nature zero IVs. Here comes the discharge from the Chin Chow. Doesn't do a lot of damage to me, but I'm able to live it. Unfortunately, it's going to paralyze me. I mean, paralyzing isn't all that bad because that means I can go second. But the problem is, I after using the Giga Impact, I won't be able to attack here. And Chin Chow can simply go for another discharge and take me out there. So bye-bye Porygon 2. I guess the disadvantage with having analytic as an ability, right, is if you want to get the full uh, 1.3 base power out of it, you need to go second, which means you're never going to go first, right? And a lot of the time, you take a lot, you take really big amounts of damage. Bringing back in the Magneton now, going for that Choice Vex try attack. It is enough to take out the Chinchia, which is very good there. So bye-bye Chinchia. Next Pokemon to come out here is going to be the, uh, it's a car, it's a Boo Boo Keys. Now, we've got the Magneton swapping out here, and I'm going to go into Magnezone here. And I thought I might be able to do something in this set. So, we got the Clefke going for a Switcheroo here. Now, my item on Magnezone, funnily enough, was a Salt Vest, right? Um, and I'm going to get a Choice Scarf. The, the, the Clefke, right, 
actually tricked me the choice, guys. So after seeing this, like, it's probably got a load of status moves. So at least it can't use them or anything like that. So I was like, you know what? Let's just go for Wild Charge here. It doesn't have any attacking moves. It's going to struggle because it got my Assault Vest on your people. Channel, people. So it's going to take some incredible damage there from the struggle. Popping off a Wild Charge here, which is really good because it's actually going to go down to the, uh, the, you know, the next struggle here. And it also can't use Trick again because it's got the Assault Vest. So the poor Clef Feet, like, it literally took itself out there. So bye-bye, Clef Feet. I didn't have to do much to take that out, which is very, very good. So I went for the Wild Charge there. That's not going to do anything because there's no Pokemon there. Next Pokemon to come out is going to be the Karkol. We've seen this one earlier on. It's going to go for Scorching Sands again. I was hoping that, uh, you know, I could live that, but it took me. I was like, man, Magnezone got rinsed then without his Assault Vest. Now I was thinking maybe I can get around this with Magneton. Let's see uh, if I can actually live this. I may even outspeed too. Karkol isn't exactly what you call fast. However, it is going to outspeed me and it's going to take me out there with the Scorching Sands as well. So my Magneton family is getting wrecked at the moment. I've only got two more Pokemon left and we're going to go into Behemoth here. Now this Behemoth, I actually got this off Surprise Raid because it had Brave Nature and a couple of physical moves. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to make this random Pokemon into a set here and I'm going to use this as my weapon of choice as my Dynamax Pokemon. So this, uh, this Behemoth set. This was analytic, right? As you already know. Now, this is a Brave Nature one. That's what it came in. And I gave it max health and max stack. And um, it actually had zero IVs, which is pretty funny. So maybe uh, whoever, if, if this is if this is your Behemoth you gave away on the surprise trade, thank you very much. I'm not sure what it's called Nick Nitrum for. I'm not really sure. Maybe that's a... Um actually, that might be another name for uh, Behemoth in another language. Possibly... I'm going to say German. I could be wrong there, though. I could be wrong. So going for the... Uh, the we've got Zen Headbutt on this set. as my main move here, which is going to be Max Mind Storm. I've also got Steel Wing on there, because, of course, we're going to boost that offense. We all know that uh, it uses... Uh, it's got little Steel Wings. I always found it funny I had that move. Anyway, we've got the Karkor going for Enduria, trying to stall out my uh, my Dynamax here. Now, with uh, the uh, Max Mind Storm there and the Psychic Terrain on the field, this thing is actually doing a lot of damage. Also, uh, it was quite good boosting my defense here too. Behemoth with Max Self and a couple of defense moves were pretty hard to take out. Now, the normal move I got in here is Facade, and I've got the Flame Orb as the item. So, you do pretty good damage with the Flame Orb Facade going second, right? And, of course, uh, you know, there's a couple of... Uh, there's always comments about uh, Flame Orb and Facade, right? There was a couple of comments yesterday. I think it was yesterday when I was using it on my... Or the day before I was using it on my Reggie Giga. Someone was like, oh, why did you put a Flame Orb... Uh, without guts. Well, the move facade isn't affected when you're burned, right? So just, I don't know, that just seems to be a question that comes up every single time I use it. So anyway, uh, the car cult was going to be going down there. I think they might need a new car. And we got the Whirlipede coming back out here, right? Now, this is normally quite bulky on the defensive side. I've got the option here of Facade or Zen Headbutt. Now, I am Burn, which will affect the damage that Zen Headbutt and Steel Wing does, but it will not affect the damage that Facade does, right? So we've got the Defense Girl coming on the other side of the field there. I'm going to pop the Facade. Look at the damage that did. That's very, very impressive damage, like considering, right? Now, this is going to have uh, the Speed Boost here, and it's used Defense Girl. So I'm thinking... Is this going to be a rollout set? It is called Wheel, so it, might, it, it, it may roll out towards me, you know. Autobots roll out and stuff like that. So here comes the rollout. It's going to do very minimal damage to me. I've got plus two in defense myself. Let's see the comparison in damage there with Zen Headbutt. It's, I reckon it's about the same or maybe a little bit less there. So regardless, whatever I move I use here, I can easily take it out. So the, uh, the, the weirdness has disappeared from the field, so I'm going to go for the facade. Um, plus, you know, Zen Headbutt can miss there as well. So this is going to be my uh, opportunity to take this out. And there's only one more Pokemon left, uh, you know, after this ride. So the rollout, unfortunately, is going to miss for the Whirlipede. That wouldn't have taken him out. I don't even think maybe a crit might have taken me out there. And I'm going to finish off with Facade. So bye-bye, Whirlipede. Now, the last Pokemon to come out on the other side of the field is going to be the Katana. I was wondering what sort of set this would actually be, right? Now, as you can see, judging on my moveset, I've, I've got nothing. I've got Zen Headbutt, Steel Wing, and Facade. I've got absolutely nothing here, so I just went for Facade. Now, the Katana is going to go for Car Mind here. It's like, is this, it's, is this a special set? A special Katana, right? Only up in my shadow, right? So it's going to get a special attack and special defense boost. I went for Facade, and it, it actually did really good damage. I was actually very, very impressed by the amount of damage that did. It's about a four to five hit KO here, judging on uh, you know, min or max damage. 
Now, my opponent is in Dynamax. They so I knew Katana was going to be their Dynamax Pokemon. And is it going to be fully special or is it going to be a mixed set? I think I'm leaning towards probably a, a fully special set here. Now, I'd say it'd have to have a grass type move, right? It'd have to have. I'd say it would have a steel type move. So either one of those are going to. You know, it is going to hurt a lot in uh, in Dynamax run. So now uh, my Behemoth is going to fake to whatever steel type move that was. Is either Flash Cannon or Steel Beam, I believe. And a uh, Behemoth is going to go down. That's all right, though. Now, I did get a plus one defense, too. So, I have very, very limited options here. Things are looking kind of bad because I've only got Porygon Z left. Now, this is a Iron Ball Porygon Z. Uh, Blizzard, Solar Beam, Pipe Beam, Shadow Ball. None of those take it out. So, I was like, let's just go for Blizzard. It's going to be my best option here. I've got an Anna the League boost here. I should just be able to live whatever this move is. Over a go hit me really, really hard. I have to take this out in one shot here. If I don't take it out in one shot, I'm done, right? Because I've already like, used the Dynamax. Here comes the Blizzard, does incredible damage. And guess what? I get a Freeze Axe right when it mattered. That was so, so close there. The Katana actually had a Berry too, which is a Potato Berry, further boosting its special attack. But man, man, that's what, that's what you look at the Katana's nickname. And that's what you call Child Lock on your seatbelt. So I've got uh, Shadow Ball here to finish it off. I was hoping it didn't actually thaw out here. And the ice actually disappeared for a second. I got like scared, but that was just the animation. And now I'm going to finish it off here with the Shadow Ball. And that, my friends, is the Katana down. What a crazy ending to the battle there. Like, if I didn't get that Freeze Axe from Blizzard, like I had to land the Blizzard. And then I had to get the Freeze Axe. That was super, super lucky. Thank you, Coop the Scoop, for the battle there, man. That was a really, really cool theme. 10. Can anyone guess what it was? Leave a comment below. Let's get on to battle number two here. This one was against Zarzan. And we got, I think we got another team team here. Now, the uh, the analytic team was very, very good, right, in a lot of the battles. Like, I had quite a few good battles this, but some of the battles, it just got absolutely destroyed in, right? Like, speedy Pokemon that kept, like, one shot at me, right? All right, the first Pokemon that we got is the uh, Baniri. Now, once again, I'm not really sure what this theme team is, so if you can guess what this theme team is, uh, please put it below in the you know, comment section of the video. I always like to, uh, you know, see all the different uh, themes and styles that people use. So going for Protect this first set, I want to get my Flame Orb up. Uh, the Baniri is not going to take me. It's going to set up Cosmic Power, so it's going to be... Uh, bulky Everlight set, so I was kind of curious how much my facade would do. Sorry, I had the uh, Toxic Orb instead of the Flame Orb. Same thing anyway with the Flame Orb and Toxic Orb. You know, same sort of thing there. So I can go for facade here. That'll do the most damage here, plus no risk of missing with Zen Head. But uh, now the Baneri is going to go for a T to Dance, which is going to confuse my Behemoth. I'm guessing they're using this because it'll allow them time maybe to set up more Cosmic Powers. And, you know, do whatever sort of strategy they're going to do. Uh, so, go for Sadi getting through the confusion, doing very good damage there. It's a uh, it's a three-hit KO, which is great on a, uh, a physical behemoth, right? That analytic, once again, giving me a nice power boost there. Of course, with Facade giving me a nice power boost being uh, poison too. Now, we got a Hyper Voice here. It does have some attacking boost. Hyper Voice does pretty good damage to me there, but it's going to need a couple more, you know, to take me out here. So, I'm going to snap out of confusion, which is very, very lucky there. One more Facade will take out... The uh, Barneri. So it's going to be interesting whether it's going to use Teeter Dance or just straight up attack me with Hyper Voice again. Either way, um, I feel like I've got a good chance to take out this Barneri. Now, the Barneri is going to go for the Teeter Dance here in hopes that I'll get confused, hit myself for confusion, and probably for the Toxie to take me out. If both those things don't take me out, the Barneri can easily go for another Hyper Voice and take me out. However, I got through all the scum and took out the little pink bunny there. So I was pretty lucky with that one for sure. Like, I got through all the confusions. Now, I've only got a little bit of health left here. I've, I've got 60. Oh, I was hoping it was 69. It's not 65. Uh, out comes the Gothitelle here. Now, Gothitelle is going to go for Attract instead of attacking me. So, maybe this is like a fully status set. So, Behemoth's going to go on the first date in its life, right? It's, it's happy right now, but it is actually attracted and it's confused. And I hit myself with Confusion. And since there was so many turns of me being poisoned from the Toxic Orb I was holding, that is going to be enough to take me out there. Right, I've got to take this Gothitelle out, so I'm going to go to Starmie. here. Probably not the greatest matchup in the world, but I wanted to see how much this would actually do, right? So I've got uh, Curse and Waterfall. Now, Gothitelle is no way I'm going to be able to, like, go second to that, so I need to go for a Curse here and drop my speed. So that was the idea. I wasn't really sure how much the Waterfall would do, like, what sort of EV spread this Gothitelle was, right? I'm thinking it's probably going to be bulky, right? So now they're going to go for a Dank Pulse here on my Starmie. It does pretty good damage there. It's about a three-hit KO, yeah? 
Um, we got another one here because now I'm going to get out sped and hopefully Waterfall will do some pretty impressive damage to Gothadel. Let's just see. So I'm going to be eating my Citrus Berry here, which is going to recover me a little bit of health. Will it recover enough to live another Dark Pulse? I don't think so. So go for Analytic Waterfall here and that is a very, very bulky Gothadel. But that was very, very impressive damage there from an analytic physical Starmie, right? So bye-bye Starmie, but a pretty nice ever there, putting a good uh, good dent in the Gothitelle. Now I can bring in my Porygon 2 and see if I can get this one to work. This Porygon 2 set, as you know, relies on using all of its moves and then last resort. So getting to use last resort is pretty difficult, right? You've got to use all three of these moves. Now Hypnosis is going to miss and we've got the normal gem activation here straight away on the Giga Impact. Will it take the Gothitelle out? I really wasn't sure. And it did. I was like, great. That, that's awesome. So if my Starmie didn't deal that like big amount of damage beforehand, you know, that definitely wouldn't have taken it out. Next Pokemon is the Absol. This is pretty interesting. So I'm on recharge here from Giga Impact. There's nothing I can do. Just waiting for the Absol to uh, make a move. Now it's going to trap me with Mean Look. So I was like, okay. They want to trap me in. What are they going to be doing? The first thought I thought would be well, maybe Perishong or some sort of trapping set with Toxic or something like that. Something to get rid of my Porygon 2 passively, right? Now, the uh, Absol is going to go for Protect there. I actually went for Thief to try and steal its item because I got rid of my uh, normal gem already. So I thought, may as well use it. That's still countered towards using Last Resort 2. So I've used Giga Impact and now I've used Thief. So all I've got to do, right, is use Iron Tail. And Iron Tail miss. Like, okay, well, I'm disappointed that it didn't land, but at least now I can use Last Resort with Analytic, right? So Abzal is going to get hit pretty hard by this attack. It is Max Elf, Max Attack Brave Nature. Abzal is going to pop a Night Sash, doing a lot of damage to me. They're getting a critical hit, which, of course, is always very good at getting. And we're going to go for Last Resort here. I've used all my moves, and Abzal gets dropped in one shot. Absol not being a super bulky Pokemon, and the fact that I had Analytic and the huge base power of Last Resort. No way it was living that one. So now comes our Sailor Uranus. I haven't been to Uranus for a while. I need to go to Pluto as well. And Porygon 2 is going to get one shot by the Psycho Cut, which is a crit. This is dangerous. This is very dangerous. So this is a seems to be a physical attacking Glade. And this team, if you haven't already noticed, is incredibly weak to fighting type moves when Starmie and Behemoth are right out of the picture. Now, Glade's going to go for an Earthquake. Magnezone's going to go down. It didn't even need to. I'm not sure if it's got a fighting move, but it didn't even need to use one. Time to find out if it actually does have one or not. So I've got to go for Dynamax here. I was kind of hoping if it had... I mean, if I had a fighting type move, I feel like I probably could live it in Dynamax and take it out with the uh, you know, Shadow Ball, right? And I should get a power boost because I've got the Iron Ball, right? Which is Iron Ball halves your speed, which is definitely a, a good item. Also, Lagging Tail would have been a good item on this team as well. Like, either either of these items would have been nice to use, right? So I uh, go for the Dynamax uh, Porygon Z here, right? You, you get pretty thick with Porygon Z and Dynamax. Then again, you get pretty thick with most Pokemon. Here comes the Psycho Cut. I think it might have been like a critting set and it did crit me. But it really didn't do too much. So I say I would have lived a fighting type move there regardless, right? Uh, the Galate is going to get one shot, which is very, very good because that Pokemon was extremely scary, all those fighting types. Now we've got two more Pokemon left. And the next one is going to be the Milotic. So it's like, okay, Milotic. This is bulky. I do have Max Overgrowth from Solar Beam. With Analytic, it should do a really, really nice chunk of damage here. But then I went first, I'm like, oh no. I, 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 you know, I know what's coming my way here. It's either a Dragon Tail, which I doubt, or it's going to be a Miracle. I know it's going to be Miracle because uh, I, I just, I just know. I knew that it wasn't going to be Dragon Tail. Here comes the Miracle, and Porygon Z is going to get Shrek. There's nothing I could have done there. Like they, they just had the perfect move for my Porygon. So very nicely, uh, Miracle Mala Tick. Now, I've got one more Pokemon left. The Grassy Terrain is up on the field right now. I'm going to go into Magneton here. Now, there is uh, one problem my opponent has in Dynamax either. Now, I've noticed that my opponent has got a Grass-type Pokemon left as their last. But I can't go for any other move. I've got to go for Zap Cannon here. And I need to probably be able to paralyze that right. Instead of going for Flash Cannon. Because I know that won't take out the Milotic, right? So uh, Milotic is going to get a, uh, actually is going to get a special attack from the uh, Disarming Voice Throat Spray. I've got to take this out. Zap Cannon is going to land and take out Milotic, which is great. That's very, very good right there. So bye-bye Milotic. Now the last Pokemon, as mentioned, was a Grass-type Pokemon. 
And that Pokemon is going to be Celebi. And also, it, there's no Dynamax yet. So I'm going to have to, you know, do something against the Celebi. So go for Zap Cannon. My only hope here was to get a Paralyze, right? Or, I mean, I can get a Paralyze if Zap Cannon lands, sure. But I've got to land the move. Now, Celebi can't swap out or anything like that. Or, like, heal off its status. I'd say it's probably just going to be attacking me with whatever set it is. Physical or special, right? You never know with Celebi. It's got great, like, great stats all along the board. And learns, like, lots of cool moves. So our Celebi is going to go for a Max Phantasmia on my Magneton. It does a lot of damage to him. Like, okay, uh, the next attack, I'm done. That's it. I'm, I'm going to faint. I have to land Zap Cannon now. Zap Cannon is going to land. And it, look at the damage that did. That did really, really huge amounts of damage. That was quite nature with Analytic. And that was versing a Dynamax Celebi too. So that was very, very impressive when you look at that. Uh, Celebi is going to have the leftovers there. And I can go for... A zap cannon here. Am I going to be able to outspeed? I believe I will. But I've got to be able to do some more damage. You know, I need a couple of paralysis. So I don't go second. Sorry, I don't go first. Paralysis kicks in for the Celebi. And I get another zap cannon. I was like, wow. That's so lucky there. All I need now is maybe like one more paralysis. And then Celebi out of the side of the Dynamax. Something might happen here, right? So Magneton's constantly getting health back there from the grassy terrain. And this is pretty much my last roll of dice here. I need to land another Zap Cannon here. And I need to paralyze. Unfortunately, the uh, Celebi is not going to get paralyzed. And it is going to take me out there with a Max Phantasm. But that was very, very close. I almost was able to take me out there with the uh, Zap Cannon. My phone started ringing then too. Hope you enjoyed this video, people. I'll catch you next time. Peace out.